Welcome to the Journal Editorial Report. I'm Paul Gigo. A dramatic escalation of the crisis in Ukraine after a surface-to-air missile brought down a Malaysia Airlines passenger jet Thursday near a separatist-controlled village on the Russian border, killing all 298 people on board. The event is sure to further inflame tensions between Russian President Vladimir Putin and President Obama, who just today before had announced a new round of sanctions against Russian businesses and individuals. But the question now is what more America can and should do. Let's ask Wall Street Journal foreign affairs columnist Brett Stevens and editorial board member Matt Kaminsky. So, Matt, let's deal with the uh, the, the circumstances around the jet uh, uh, down uh, shoot shoot down. Um, what to whom does the circumstantial evidence point to? Well, the jet was flying when it was blown out of the air, essentially over rebel-held territory in eastern Ukraine. These are pro-Russia, uh, many of them are actually Russian uh, fighters right. who have taken control of this part of Ukraine. It's also known that these uh, fighters have gotten fairly advanced rocket um, systems, uh, surface-to-air missiles. They showed them off in late June. And even the morning of Thursday, they put out a press statement saying we shot down a, a high-flying Ukrainian cargo plane. When it turned out this was uh, tragically the civilian plane, they uh, tried to backtrack. But all the circumstances Potential evidence so far points that it was uh, the rebels who uh, targeted this. But, there, but now the separatists are denying it, of course. And uh, Putin, Vladimir Putin, came out on Thursday and uh, said this is Ukraine's fault because they are the place where have, they have allowed on their territory this to take place. Right. And Russia now is even more vociferously denying responsibility. Well, he's denying that, um, you know, he's, tr he's trying to blame the Ukrainians for starting a separate rebellion that he himself, in fact, manufactured. I mean, let's just walk back a little bit to the, you know, the start of this whole problem, which was when a pro-Russian leader was toppled in a popular revolution in Kiev in February. Russia then invaded Crimea. It tried to stir things up in eastern Ukraine. They didn't get very far. And then out of the blue, one day in April, you had separatist fighters pop up. Right. A lot across cities in Eastern Ukraine. And there's Ukraine. no doubt that, that Russia is supplying these, these separatists. There is zero doubt. I mean, these yes. are the head of the rebel army is a Russian military intelligence officer. We know that. The prime minister of the separatist government is a citizen of Russia who happens to live in Moscow. They go back to Moscow regularly. And in fact, there was some intercepts of uh, telephone calls on Thursday where the head of the uh, rebel force was informing a more senior officer in the Russian military intelligence about what had happened and what they had, they had found. Now, we don't know whether these recordings are, um, how accurate they are, but the U.S. says they have no reason to doubt their, uh, that it is what the Ukrainians say it is. And U.S. intelligence, Brett, are saying basically they're sure it was a missile shoot down. The doubt is only whether it was actually the separatists or, 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 the, Russians or the Russians themselves. So what are the implications of this for how the world looks at Russia? Well, look, we had the invasion of Crimea in March, and the world essentially looked away. I think the Obama administration was desperate to essentially bury the matter as quickly as possible because they felt they still had business to do with the Russians, particular when it, particularly when it came to negotiations uh, over Iran. But they did impose sanctions, Brad. They've imposed minimal sanctions. Now, they, it's true that uh, just this week they in increased the sanctions, but even then, the posture remained much the same, not in part because of the administration's reluctance, but also because of European reluctance. Now you have at least 150 Dutch citizens who were aboard this flight, simply flying by themselves or with their families to Kuala, uh, Kuala Lumpur, a number of German citizens, Canadians. And so you would hope that the Europeans would begin to understand the severity of their um, uh, of the new ge geopolitics with which they are confronted. One of the things that they need to start doing is rethinking defense expenditures. Defense expenditures in all of the NATO countries are down below what what should be the the the, le the, the legal threshold. They need to rethink their gas imports because too much of too much of um, ninety percent of Russian ga uh, of gas in Europe comes from Russia. But step gas. back for a second. I mean, okay, you can do all that, but is, is is that because this is a moment of moral clarity and strategic clarity saying look carefully now in light of this at the nature of the Putin regime what it is what its ambitions are right because the if they don't if, if, this, if this is not the wake up call 
then the next wake-up call is going to happen when Russians start um, making uh, revanchist claims or revisionist claims in some of the Baltic states where there are also large Russian populations or maybe in Moldova and in, in, in Southeast, uh, uh, Southeast Europe. If Europeans and Americans wait too long uh, to stop, to start taking action against the Russians, the, this Russian state will be emboldened. And the first thing that we ought to be doing is arming the, finally arming the Ukrainian military so it can stand up to these rebels. But you, um, Matt, you know the Europeans very well. You've lived there, and uh, they have a very comfortable life. They don't want it to be upset with this idea that somehow there is an aggressive regime that wants to change the security order in Europe and have a potentially powerful regime right on the fringes of, of, of this very comfortable European life. The, the Europeans say that you, America, who trades far less with Russia than we do, you can afford to um, sanction Russia. We can't because we have you know, much higher unemployment but rates. But is this going to change that mentality? I think you've already seen a lot of people in Europe saying this is partly our fault. Because for months now, we've put out statements how gravely concerned the EU is. But when it comes to action, it's been very pinprick and very weak. And that's the message that Vladimir Putin got. It was an invitation for him to keep escalating this in Eastern Ukraine. And ultimately, this is really on him. All right, Matt. Thank you.